Edith Witter, who goes by Edie, Hello, this is Edie. has spent the last 30 years exploring the deep sea in little crafts like this one. She's an expert in documenting organisms that light up, or bioluminesce, and it all started on her first trip in this submersible called WASP. I knew that I would see bioluminescence, but I just was completely unprepared for how much there was and how spectacular it was. It was, was mind-blowing. A little reminder, bioluminescence should not be confused with phosphorescence, which it's not, or fluorescence, which it's not. Phosphorescence and fluorescence are photically stimulated light, and bioluminescence is chemically stimulated light. Okay, back to Dr. Woodard's first trip. I came away from the experience feeling like this has got to be one of the most important processes in the ocean, and I couldn't understand why more people weren't studying it. So Witter got started by engineering a device to film the bioluminescent organisms. And when was that? I think that was 1984. And how did it work? It was a screen that I put out in front of the little mini-sub that I was driving. And as I went through the water, I had an intensified camera looking at the screen, so anything that bumped into the screen would be stimulated to bioluminesce. Hence the name. The splat camera system. And I started to realize I could identify animals by the type of flashes they were producing. But that's only good for population numbers. To understand the function of bioluminescence, the splat cam wasn't going to cut it. Over the years, I've very much wanted to be able to observe unobtrusively in the ocean, because clearly you're not going to be able to see bioluminescence if you're down there with bright white lights, which is how we usually go and explore the ocean. Um, I developed a camera system called Eye in the Sea that uses far red light and a camera system that's sensitive to it. The first time we deployed it was in the Gulf of Mexico, and we were using a, a bioluminescent lure. It imitated certain types of bioluminescent displays. Uh, less than a minute and a half after we turned it on, we recorded a squid that was about six feet long and just completely new to science. While that squid wasn't bioluminescing, this clearly is. But can you guess what you're looking at? That was uh, from a shrimp, and it's actually spewing the luminescence out of its mouth. And this fireworks display? Yeah, that was a comb jelly, and it releases those particles into the water and then swims away. So it's, all of those particles are to blind and distract a predator while it swims away into the darkness. And that's one of the functions of bioluminescence. Other organisms seem to light up to attract mates or food, and this little fish is using its lights as an alarm. If you're caught in the clutches of a predator, in this case the predator was me holding its tail, your only hope for escape may be to attract the attention of a larger predator that will attack your attacker and give you an opportunity for escape. It's called a burglar alarm. And different organisms have different recipes for light making. For example, the short-nosed green-eye fish uses different chemicals to bioluminesce than this bamboo coral. There's bunches of different ways that you can mix chemicals together to produce light, and evolution has come up with quite a few of them. And Witter will likely find more examples when she deploys her newest device, a mini eye in the sea, off the coast of Florida later this year. For Science Friday, I'm Flora Lichtman.